Hello, welcome to Being Techie. Today I am going to explain the first of ASP.NET Core series videos. It is about project structure of ASP.NET Core framework. Before beginning with the project structure, let's see what is ASP.NET Core and how is it different from the earlier frameworks. ASP.NET Core 1.0, also known as ASP.NET 5. We have been seeing various ASP.NET frameworks like 4, 4.5. The latest one is also called 5, but they later named it as ASP.NET Core 1.0 because ASP.NET Core does not introduce any new features what Microsoft has done is they have restructured the entire framework they refactored into manageable individual pieces pretty much ASP.NET Core 1.0 is a set of NuGet packages there is no new features introduced in part of it only internal design has been changed as part of ASP.NET Core 1.0. So I'm going to explain how ASP.NET Core 1.0 web application is different from ASP.NET 4.5 web application. To explain that, we need to have Visual Studio 2015 with Update 3 installed and to create a .NET Core 1.0 applications, install an SDK dotnet core 1.0 the url has been given there on the screen you can install that from web to show the differences in both of these default projects i have already created one dotnet asp.net application using 4.6 so this we know the default uh, template being created by visual studio and we know the project structure the CS project file, properties, references, web.config file, global ASX file, all these. We are very familiar with all these files. Now let's create a new uh, ASP.NET Core application. And another thing to note is both these applications can be created in Visual Studio 2015 at the same time. It's not that once you install the latest framework, you uh, you can still go with the uh, older version of ASP.NET framework. Let's create a new project. Here we should select ASP.NET Core web application. It is explicitly mentioned as .NET Core. Whereas to create a 4.6 applications, we need to select this one where it is mentioned just .NET Framework without any core option inside it. And this core template will appear only if we install .NET Core 1.0 SDK for Visual Studio. Otherwise, it won't appear by just installing 2015 Visual Studio. Let's give a name. ASP.NET Core Application and another thing to observe in the core templates we just see three types MT, Web API and Web Application in the older versions we had plenty of options here the reason they have reduced these options is they have combined all these things into single templates for example there is no differentiation between MVC template and Web API template in the core application. So that's the reason we just see Web API and there is no special option for MVC. So let's select Web API, click OK. So, new ASP.NET Core application has been created. So, 
first time when you look at this core default application it looks very different we have been used to a different structure of visual studio project and suddenly this has been changed and we see a very different kind of extensions especially with .json plenty of .json files including a solution level uh, json file which is global.json and earlier there was no file with an extension .json so i'm going to explain on a high level what are these individual files and why these are introduced when compared to the old asp.net application okay let's start with the first file we see here which did not exist in the older version which is global.json it tells where our projects are present inside the solution because the projects are not at the solution level there is another folder created called src source inside that there is the actual application project has been created probably we can have another folder called test and the unit test projects might go inside that so by default this global.json will include a property for projects and it tells like which folders which solution folders have the actual source code and the next one is SDK it tells like which version of .NET framework it this application is built against since it is a core again we have started from 1.0 so this is given as 1.0.0 .0 .0. moving on this is the ASP.NET core application project file if you see the project file extension xproj which is completely different from the older versions in earlier versions we used to have csproj even in the earlier versions the csproj used to hold a lot of properties related to the project and configurations especially what we see in the right click properties of that project file if you look at the new project file right click properties there are not many options at all so all these options are moved away from the project file moving on to the next file under properties folder we have a file called launch settings json let's see what we had in the earlier versions in earlier versions of properties we have assembly info which is a cs file where we used to provide attributes at assembly level these are changed into a json file called launch settings but of course it is not same as assembly info what we used to have so what does launch settings.json contain it contains primarily two things rather uh, i would say all the settings related to launching the web application from visual studio so the important thing to note the profile section if you look at here we have two profiles inside it one is iis express another one is asp asp net core application these two correspond to what we see here in this debug button so here we have two profiles so it these settings tells us like how the application should be launched when we select one of these option, options for example if you take iis express all the conditions present under IIS sections will be used. It tells like what is the command name, IIS Express, launch browser, true, what is the launch URL, and the environment variable. So there is a new concept in ASP.NET Core uh, where the framework itself deals with environment variables. Uh, I will will explain this in a different session. Similarly asp.net core application profile again it has a similar settings what is the launch url and which environment variable to be used and this is settings 
this is not really applicable specific to any profile but rather common to all of them moving on to the next one references references is a folder which shows all the referenced assemblies by the current application there is nothing much changed inside this references but one obvious change is the icons in the new references section it shows like what kind of assembly we are referring to is it a NuGet assembly or a direct assembly link or a project link in the older versions all used to have a same icon so there is no much differentiation between a NuGet assembly versus a direct assembly reference but the new one clearly differentiates between those two and also it shows clearly like which NuGet package has brought all the assemblies inside it it's kind of a dependency levels on the server side assemblies see for example this is like a direct assembly so this is a references assemblies and new asp.net core application and the next one www root so this folder has a special meaning in the new application all the static files for example the javascript files css files image files should directly go inside this ww root folder it has a special meaning anything any static file placed out of this folder are not going to be retrieved by the application of course this is a configurable thing but by default it should be in ww root folder and the dependencies dependencies is used to show the dependencies between client side modules since it is a web api it, it did not create any default client side modules otherwise it would have created uh, client side modules for example bower grunt npm node javascript J jquery so this will show hierarchy between those and the dependencies between those client side modules and another point to mention the latest .NET framework does recognize all those new client side development packages such as jquery grunt gulp etc and the next controllers which is same as as the older versions the next one is app settings.json this is little interesting app settings.json contains application settings which is similar to uh, in the older versions we have web.config where we have an element called app settings so these are the configurational elements which we define as a configure Configure using a configuration API in the older versions. Of course, in the newer versions, the API has been re redesigned, but it is being picked up from the AS app settings.json. Usually, we specify that inside the startup class, saying that this is the file we need to pick up the all the configuration settings. I will explain more about these configuration system in another session. And the next one, the project.json. It contains all the dependencies, various versions that are being used by the, we can say that this file contain part of the information which was used to contain in the csproj file in the older versions as i 
already told the new project file does not contain much of the information so part of information has been moved to project.json and mo for more information on this project.json file look out for my further session on asp.net core again startup file if you remember we used to have startup class for all the OWIN enabled applications and since in ASP.NET Core OWIN has become a default architecture so for all the applications you create using ASP.NET Core a startup file will be created and for more details about the individual steps inside this startup I'll create another video so this is the new project structure of ASP.NET Core application. Thank you for watching. Please look out for the subsequent videos in ASP.NET Core series. See you next time. Thanks.